Welcome to Hatman Strats Back Daily Boxing News. I'm going to upset some UFC fans here. Now, I've pointed this out in the past, but now we've got Dan Hardy, who is a part of the PFL, making the same point. And that is that UFC is actually a lot of smoke and mirrors. Because for the longest time, in the minds of the casual public, UFC and MMA are two acronyms that are used almost interchangeably, as if they mean the same thing. But of course, they don't mean the same thing. UFC stands stands for Ultimate Fighting Championship. It is a promotional house. MMA stands for Mixed Martial Arts, which is the name of the sport. But because UFC has been so big and they've been so successful and they're such a brand name globally, many casual fans have come to believe that UFC is the actual sport. And Dana White and the top brass of the UFC play on this. They've used smoke and mirrors to make you believe that whoever the UFC champion is, is the champion of the entire sport of MMA. But how could that possibly be the case? And I've seen loads of UFC fanboys over the years try and make this argument as well. And look, I'm no MMA UFC expert whatsoever, but I'm somebody that is very good with logic. I've known for a long time that there are multiple MMA promotional companies out there. And from my experience watching boxing over the decades, I know that upsets happen. So even if the UFC have generally got the cream of the crop as far as fighters because they pay more than anybody else, supposedly, that doesn't mean that all of their champions could necessarily beat all of the champions in other promotional companies every single time. In fact, I'd be amazed if that were the case. Surely, just based upon statistical probability, some of the champions with other MMA companies would upset some of the UFC champions in cross-promotional fights. And I think they Dana White knows that, which is why he's so against cross-promotional fights. And so here we've got Dan Hardy, again, who is now a part of the PFL. And by the way, the PFL has now merged with Bellator. So they're stronger now than they used to be. They've got a bigger stable now than they used to have. They're now emerging as a more legitimate rival to UFC in terms of the size of their stable. And so Dan Hardy said in this interview that the PFL have made offers to the UFC recently to do cross-promotional fights and the UFC don't want any part of it. Because if a PFL guy, let's say France, Francis Ngannou were to beat the current UFC heavyweight champion in a cross-promotional match, then all of a sudden, this ridiculous situation where the UFC call their champions undisputed, I mean, it's laughable that they do that, would be over, literally overnight. It will come to an end. Because other people will be like, hang on, this guy from PFL just beat your champion. So how is the UFC champion undisputed? I mean, they never were undisputed to begin with, folks. But that penny would drop with so many people if that scenario I just described were to actually unfold. And I said, at least a couple years ago, when I started having these debates with UFC fanboys, that the more popular MMA becomes, the more people start participating in it, eventually it's going to become more like boxing, where UFC is just one of many powerful promotional companies. You see, UFC has been given this credit over the years for having all these great matchups, and that boxing should be just like UFC. Well, boxing is far bigger than MMA. You can't keep the whole sport of boxing when you've got over 20,000 active male boxers in the world. You can't keep all of that under one promotional company. It's too big. Boxing is also a much older sport than this current incarnation of MMA. And because of that, lots of different promotional companies have emerged over the decades and established themselves in various countries around the world. As MMA matures as a sport, that is invariably going to happen to MMA as well. And this is what we're now seeing with the PFL. They're now emerging and they're starting to put pressure on the UFC to have cross-promotional fights. This is why Dana White was so upset with Francis Ngannou leaving because he didn't want this scenario where a star as big as that could be successful with a different MMA company because that not only takes some audience away from UFC potentially, but also some fighters potentially. Now they might be competing with UFC to sign people rather than being used as, I don't know, a feeder organization into the UFC or a place where ex-UFC fighters who are not so good anymore go to see out the end of their careers. And Garnu left the UFC on top of his game.
So look, understand my position here. I like MMA, but the UFC is not quite what you think it is. They put on a lot of great fights, but the reality is they're in-house fights. It will be like Eddie Hearn putting on a bunch of in-house fights and saying, these are the best fights in the world. These are the best fighters in the world. You don't need to watch any other fighters outside of our promotional stable. Or Frank Warren doing it or whoever, right? The PBC, I mean, <laughs> they almost do do that. But of course, we in boxing give them a lot of criticism over it. Whereas in MMA, it's like there's virtually no criticism whatsoever of the UFC having this in-house fight situation and yet calling their champions undisputed. It's ridiculous. It's smoke and mirrors. Over the next few years, that smoke and mirrors is going to disappear. And it's a good thing. MMA will become too big for one promotional company to control the narrative on it. Because it's not that UFC have necessarily controlled the whole sport, but they've controlled the narrative in the sport. Those days, are coming to an end. If you haven't seen this interview with Dan Hardy, make sure you check it out on Talk Sports YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. And before I go, make sure you check out these videos that I've just uploaded to my Patreon page. One of them is a nearly three hour career review on Riddick Bowe, where I analyze footage of many of his most significant fights. So this is not the screenshots I use on YouTube. This is actual video footage of his fights. And I've also uploaded this video of the first round of Baturbia versus Bivo, where I'm actually counting the number of punches landed because CompuBox for that particular round was way off not even close to being accurate. The real punch stats for that round were far closer than CompuBox had them. And they missed the best punch in the round, which was actually landed by Artur Baturbiev. That's a fact. That's not conjecture. I show it in this video in slow motion, in HD, so there can be absolutely no doubt whatsoever. If you want to access this video, along with hundreds of hours worth of other exclusive boxing content, as well as our members chat, just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called the Boxing brotherhood there's no contract no commitment you can cancel at any time just like netflix but it's a hell of a lot cheaper just download the app from the play store or the app store all the links are in the description box below